Welcome back to V-Rule. Today is Friday, which means it is our Friday Fight for First. That's the best I got right now. It's really just a look back at all the sets to see what are the top selling cards. Not highest rated, not best artworks, not highest price, but currently the top selling cards from each set going in reverse from old to new. So we're going to dial it way back to the early days, but the last set. Uh, of the base set series Okay, if you look at Poke Elector over here, we had base set jungle fossil base set 2 team rocket and now we have the promos to go over from the wizard of the coast era So wizard of the coast was the manufacturer licensed to do so on Pokemon cards originally and then it got moved back to uh, Nintendo uh, to be the Pokemon company at large that took it back in-house rather than licensing out to Wizard of the Coast. Uh, but we do refer to this as the WOTC era. That W-O-T-C, Wizard of the Coast era. Okay, so if you ever see that WOTC era, this is all we're thinking about. The Wizard of the Coast. Everybody who started out in the very beginning remembers that logo. It was everywhere because Pokemon was everywhere. And you know what? I'd like Pokemon to be spread out even further by giving you a chance to win it. All right, Galarian Articuno Tin from Crown Zenith, two three-pack blisters from Crown, uh, Stellar Crown, Crown Zenith Stellar Crown. Didn't even do that on purpose, but it works. And a Pokemon Mystery Prize. So four total prizes going out to four total winners. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and like the video. Leave me a comment. All the usual stuff. Make sure you're part of V Rule, and I post a video every single day. As I do that. I'm going to be mentioning this same giveaway until we hit the threshold of 2,500 subscribers. Once we hit that threshold, that's when this giveaway is triggered and those four lucky winners will be selected. The way I'm going to select them is you need to also go and comment at this video here. That's the one you need to comment on to make sure we can have a pool of comments that I can pull from to select those four winners. So that's the way to do it. That's how we're going down. And let's get back into the old times of Wizard of the Coast promos. Small set, uh, Poke Elector, what do we even t talk about here? 53 cards? It specifies 53 cards. Um, if you search it on TCG Player, there was some odd uh, 69 results. And if you start sifting through, you can see that some are not quite what they say they are uh, or where they line up. So not gonna go off of that. 53 cards in the full Wizard of the Coast promo set. Uh, be a really cool set to complete. I have a handful of these from when I was a child. I have a handful more that I've obtained as an adult, but I don't have a complete set. I would love to do that. It'd be a nice little mini set to have. Uh, and actually, I've been looking at some of the prices just recently thinking, you know what? At this point, maybe I just go for damage just to get a copy of each of them because having that would be kind of cool. Little little throwback to my own childhood. But you know what? That's how my brain works. I don't want to buy damage cards for really any reason, but just to have it in hand and say I got it, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, we are going with best selling based on TCG player, and I will point out to begin with an anomaly, a nimble, an anomaly uh, that I've uncovered here. This one in particular, Pokemon Center, Watsi promo, uh, lightly played for $700 plus $5 shipping. What are you doing? Just included at that point. Uh, recent sales, one that I could see here one sale back uh, in July so 76 moderately played for 650 there are a total of what six listings something like that handful of listings eight seven I can count maybe it's changed I don't know looks like seven listings here 700 800 800 800 with photos these are actually pretty clean but eight hundred dollars my gosh uh, so listings are very few and far between. This is not making sense. Uh, this price point, price point may be accurate. I haven't dove in deep on this. This was the number 10 slot, but it just felt so awkward that in the last year, there's no record here. There's only one sale to go off of. The price seems uh, a little bit high, but it could be accurate. I didn't dive in, like I said. Uh, so we're going to kind of set that aside. I can understand why this would be a higher, uh, higher sought after card. Being one of the promos, you have Chansey in the photo. It's very CGI, early CGI in that computer-generated imaging. Uh, but it's uh, pretty cool 
promo to to add to the collection if you have that opportunity and if you have it you might want to look at seeing what it might be to sell it because it looks like that price is pretty high available for you and you might want to turn that into some some additional pieces to your collection snorlax watsy promo coming in here this crazy like sketch hand drawn here looks like a costume that some kid might wear you know and he's got the extra long legs the arms seem a little bit longer so he just kind of seems more human uh you know human stature i guess is a good way to put it uh with the longer legs and the longer arms rather than the, the snorlax we all know and, and love uh, the the big Z here, the little Z's coming out, indicating sleeping, and then that Eevee. I think that Eevee gets missed by so many people. It's just hanging out, chilling. So here's our Snorlax going in at a near mint for fifty-five dollars. And over the past year, it seems like it hasn't really moved much. It's gone down, gone up, but uh, in that fifty-dollar range, fifty-five dollar range, Misty's Cedra. Uh, I picked up a couple of these because when they were sitting near mint just a year ago or something. They were like six bucks, so I was like, ah, I remember that one, why not? So I picked up, a, I think I picked up three of them at the time. So market price says five, uh, that's going to be all over the place. Condition's going to play a big factor and really bring that price overall down. So you got to go based on condition and kind of see what you're looking for. But the pre-releases were really cool because it was a nice introduction to a set that was coming up. This was going to be intro to the Gym Hero set. Uh, so you have the trainer card built into that misty cedra misty being a, a more headliner character of the original anime and uh there's even whispers of this happening again or at least to some effect getting the misty's cards and blaine's charizard that kind of stuff reworking that that whole mechanic into the tcg so we'll have to see that's just a small little footnote along the way here eevee watsy promo beautiful this almost looks like eevee as a flareon really just so flowing full uh, almost a fiery tail. So I always associated this Eevee specifically to Flareon, like it only had one way to go for evolving. Uh, we're looking at about $15 in the light play. Uh, so, you know, decent 11 bucks in the median there. We have our Mewtwo from the movie promo. There were four promos that came out with the original Pokemon movie. Mewtwo was one of those four. I think we have a couple others in here. The only one that won't be show up is actually uh, Electabuzz. It was further down the list. Um, I have a set of these four from when I was a kid going to the movie multiple times <laughs> to get these uh, and then also trading for them. I think I went three times uh, and then I traded my way to having the collection of four. And then uh, again, a year and a half ago, two years ago maybe now, I don't know, it's a little blurry because it's been a little bit coming back into the hobby. Uh, I went and I bought them as sealed as a set, so I have the sealed set as well. Uh, very cool there, and you can you can slide the seal. There's a card in front of it showing its movie promo, but you can slide it to see which which Pokemon it was. So uh, something interesting there. Just more of the interesting of history and throwing back and being that reminder here. Another release uh, introducing the Team Rocket set, the Dark Gyarados. Uh, I was lucky to obtain this one originally as a kid before the set came out. That blew my mind to have a pre-release card in hand. It felt so special. They were not like going into GameStop and getting it. You had to be a subscription to a magazine and it would come in that. There were so many other ways, but uh, it was not easy to get these pre-release cards back then. Trading for them was hard enough, let alone being able to obtain it naturally. So uh, looking like seven bucks here for a light play, that's not bad. Uh, Heavy plates, three dollars damage, you know, two and a half. Light plate, eleven. Okay, so it's kind of all over the place here. Uh, but you know, if you wanted to get a light play rather than trying to seek out the the near mint, it's not a bad pickup even today. Which just proves that vintage doesn't always equal value. Vintage doesn't equal value. I just want to can't drill that far enough because there are sets that came out later that have so much more as far as price point, so much more potential than stuff that came before it. And we're going to see that throughout the entirety of the TCG. We'll always see that. That no matter what, you're going to have those cards that hit hard. Recently, we're talking modern. You have the Moonbrion, the Rayquaza from Evolving Skies. Those things are insane. Giratina from Lost Origin, insane. All right? You take it to the Greninja now in Twilight Masquerade. That is one of the newest sets. That's the newest full set uh, released. Shrouded Fable is kind of an intermediate, little specialty set. But uh, it's the most recent full set. And that thing is skyrocketing. So vintage doesn't equal value every time. There's a lot of other considerations. Although, we have to go back to an original mascot like Pikachu. Blank's Pikachu. Uh, everybody calls it birthday Pikachu. And some kids would ruin it by writing their name. Ugh. 
Uh, I wouldn't even write my name on it for the Celebrations reprint of this one. So the original, without it being damaged, uh, is going to be going for quite a bit. Light play to 85, market price is 82, and it's only been climbing over the last year. And I think it helps because Celebrations kind of brought it back to the surface and reminded everybody how cool that card was. The Entine, uh, I don't know if this was the first of its kind where the entire reverse hollow pattern, as we're familiar today, uh, existed. I, I gotta double check. I think it was the first one that had that reverse hollow pattern uh, completely. And this one's just had a weird shoot up recently, so I'm not gonna go too crazy there. But okay, that's on damage. Let's let's be re realistic here. Let's go to a, like a light blade to be a little bit more realistic. Here we go. That that makes more sense. But still a little little spike up here. Um, but we're at you know three and a half bucks or so. Not too bad for a light blade. You're gonna get some scratches big time on that. If you get a squirrel in there or two or the way that one's pictured, that's that'd be cool. Venusaur coming in here. Um, Kind of cool that there wasn't a Charizard, there wasn't a Blastoise, but there was a Venusaur. I think it was very undervalued Pokemon, and I don't know if that was part of the thinking. I mean, it was only the 13th promo to be released out of the 53, so uh, it was pretty early on in the promos. But I wonder if it was just to kind of show Venusaur a little bit of love uh, in some way, or give another moveset uh, to Venusaur in the TCG to begin with there, but it looks like the price has been just kind of steadily climbing up. Not a lot of heavy sales, but looks like one a day pretty much on average. Not too bad. Damage is going for 28. Uh, I don't even know what we have for uh, near mint or anything. 125 if you're going mint, and there's a picture, so you can at least verify that in some ways. Dragonite, another movie promo here. Uh, looks great. You see the, the stamp there. This stamp is like a, a gilding. So a little bit of a tiny raised foil looks like gold if you're you know getting the right light um, you know it's obviously fake it's not real gold or anything but it's a it's called a gilding they have on there for that that stamp of it for Pokemon the first movie very beginning the one that kicked it off in theaters and had lines out the door it was almost like Star Wars but totally different crowd so um, ten bucks ten bucks here ish eight nine in the uh, in the light play not too bad cool little promo there so the the cool thing is they're somewhat affordable uh, Mew Watsy promo here there is a hollow version and a non hollow version I have a dozen of the non hollow version I have zero of the hollow version it'd be great to obtain this and really coming in for uh, a decent price even at near mint being in the thirty six and a half dollar range there for a recent one uh, light played in 26 ten dollar difference I'd probably go light played just to have it in my collection not be uh, tossing the whole ten dollars there uh, that's the top ten the top ten and that uh, Pokemon Center but I did want to pull out a couple honorable mentions as far as best selling lately here one that I think is phenomenal this Meowth and the reason is the depiction of Meowth when you grew up with the anime Meowth was a villain. He was a character that was with Team Rocket. He was one of the bad guys. He was supposed to be one of your least favorite Pokemon. I don't know if it was supposed to be, but it definitely seemed like that was the drive on his character. And just having Meowth here, hanging out, being a cat, looking cute, the only one that can speak to the people uh, in their language. Uh, it was just kind of cool to see Meowth in this way and, and hollow and getting some love. So I do like Meowth and Cat Punch. Anybody familiar with cats? You've been punched before. I know it because I have too. Uh, so this one's really inexpensive to be able to pick up at, at a decent price. You know, near mint for 12 bucks. That's not too bad. Uh, we have the Mewtwo. I just love the fact that it has a little bit more depth than your average card of this time. There's a background with scenic sky there. You have the trees coming in. And then you have this action shot of Mewtwo, you know, performing a move. Whether it's uh, energy control or telekinesis, I don't know, but performing one of its moves and uh, kind of giving us a different scenery in another side. And pretty early on, this is a 12th promo, so pretty early on from that original 151 Mewtwo that we started with. So to see him step up and be in action instead of just pose there like a, like a Ken doll or something or a Barbie doll, <laughs> just plastic statue, um, looks like uh, it was just a whole nother level at the time and kind of elevated the artwork very quickly and the promos uh, had a, a tendency to do that where it was just another level of card that we weren't used to. Uh, I think it's really cool to see the Watsy promos when you look back and again I'd love to get that as a set in some fashion but uh, the promos today they are just getting amazing and also I do feel like there's a lot of gaps where we have all these illustration rares coming out like crazy why aren't we seeing more promos like that all the way through in my opinion getting a promo that's an EX who cares 
if it's not the entire card. And they can call it an EX or have that move set, uh, set on there, but if it's not that entire card with the artwork, oh man, what are we doing, you know? I mean, this one here, recent one, you can still pick up Pikachu with Mew for the Worlds coming up 2024. Uh, they're underway very, very soon. Uh, this one, great artwork, but why can't we do a full card? Why can't we just go for it and get there? Is it the bringing it back to the nostalgia, having that specific frame? Is there something tying us to that in all promos? I don't know, or a lot of promos still. Uh, not all of them by any means, but a lot of promos. I don't know, maybe. I just think if we have this whole level of art opened up, let's go for it. And speaking of nice artworks that you could get, take it right out of the tin. It's right there. You can see it in the window. But maybe you're going to pull something like a gold card out of Crown Zenith from this Grillion Articuno tin. This is going out to one lucky winner. I have two Stellar Crown 3-pack blisters, one with each promo. Of course, they're the old school promo, just that little window, not a full art. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, but these are going out to two more winners and then a Pokemon Mystery Prize for a total of four prizes going out to four winners. I mentioned how you got to do this early on in the video if you want to go back and ch double check on that. But of course, you know, you must subscribe to the channel. You got to like the video, hit the notification bell. I post every single day. Be ready for the new video when it comes out. Uh, and then leave a comment down below. I'd love to have your feedback. And what do you think about this? Have you taken a look at the Watsy promos? Do you have a favorite in mind? I'd love to know which one speaks to you, especially since we're looking at it from a totally different perspective from the stuff we see today. Uh, now, 24, 25 years later, uh, even further, really, if you're going back to the original launch in Japan. But uh, my goodness, it's come a long way, and a lot of these still hold up, in my opinion. That's going to do it for us for that Fight for First Friday, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.